to uh, to let 2020 be a year of, of uh, not, you know, we, when we talk about prosperity and doing better financially and stuff, everybody's for that. But see, the Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. A halon measure, press down, shaken together, running over the top. He says, so men give back into your bosom. Amen. And I want to encourage you not just to be faithful in the, the little that you have to do. Uh, you know what I mean? And, you know, we're all asked to give tithes. God, God asks us. Your church don't ask you. God asks you to pay your tithes. But he also said, America, bring your offering to, which is above your tithes for your church. You with me? But I want to encourage you to also remember this year and make it a make it something uh, you know that you do. Make it a goal. God, I want to bless my pastors. And I never ask for anything at all. I don't ask for anything from my church or from anything else. But I'm saying it for your benefit too. Because if you bless the man of God, God will truly bless you. And I'm not talking about paying your tithes, because that don't do nothing for me. That fixes God's house, pays his bills. You with me? But I'm telling you, uh, Brother Roy de la Garza was doing a revival just recently at Pastor Ray's. And the people at the revival, pastors taught them, you know, to come and give to the church. Now you're tithes and offerings above that. And so people, if you ever watch Pastor Ray's services, people are coming throughout the services, dropping money on the altar. Have you guys seen that? Any of them? They'll come in and bring money. They'll throw twenties, pastor challenges and throw hundreds. And you know what I mean? And, 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 and they bless like that. You know what I mean? And it's like, but you see his church and they're financially blessed. They went from a little storefront to a two, three million dollar building because he taught his people how to give. Because it ain't in everybody giving you, it's in you giving to everybody. But more than anything, Roy Laracasa said, he said, do you know what you're doing here is scriptural? He said in the Old Testament, they would always come and they would drop finances and their money at the feet of the pastors, the feet of the men of God. And God blessed them people for it. Uh, Israel became one of the greatest nations because of their giving. Because God told them, told them the secret of success was not in getting, 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 and, and all this. It was in giving. Uh, with me? But I want to encourage you to be a blesser this year. To, to really sow. To make it a monthly goal. God, I'm going to give my time and honor, but I'm going to give so much to my pastors. Because God, I want to bless them. Because I want that blessing that they have to come on me too. Amen. You with me? Amen. And you watch, you watch and see what God does. Amen. And that's something for you to, you know, some of you may say, oh no, I don't have it or whatever. And that's between you and the Lord. I'm just giving you, extending you that. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And, and I'm just asking you, you know I mean? Be a blessing to your minister, to your pastor, even those watching on YouTube that don't go to our church. Be a blessing to that man of God that you will visit every Sunday. And watch and see what God does. God will truly bless you. Amen? amen. And that's for free. I ain't going to charge you for that. Amen? amen. Father, we thank you tonight for the word of God. We thank you that your word is true. And we thank you that it is working right now in our lives, Lord. And Father, Lord, that tonight, God, we just open our hearts, our minds, our spirit to you tonight. Holy Spirit, we pray you would speak to us individually. Speak to our hearts. Drop something special in our hearts tonight, Holy Spirit. Anoint my lips, my mind, and my heart tonight, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. 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 I want to I talk about a, a, um, a message that I kind of had Thursday or Tuesday night. And just because of time's sake and stuff, I wasn't able to share it. But I want to I talk just a little bit about 2020 vision tonight. Amen. And, and, and talk to you about what, what vision is and uh, you know God's vision and, and uh, uh, some of the some of the forefathers of the of the faith and their vision. Right, God showed them, you know, how to believe in Him, how to see things, you know, ahead of time, how to believe God for great things to come. Amen. amen. How to trust Him. Amen. amen. So I'm going to talk about vision tonight. Amen. amen. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to give you a definition of vision, and this is probably one you're all familiar with. Because you know you don't, you can't see. You're blind. Yeah. The first definition is um, the faculty or state of being 
able to see. The faculty of state of being able to see. Now we all know that that's what eyesight is. That's what vision is. Amen? But the second definition is the one I'm after. And this is something I get my definitions on my phone. I Google them and I just put define vision. And this is one of the second definitions it gave me. This is my favorite. I know there are other ones to see, but this one is the ability. This is number two, the ability to think about or plan the future. The ability to think about or plan the future with, uh, with imagination or wisdom. Let me say it again. The ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or vision, or excuse me, wisdom. Imagination, imagination or wisdom. Amen. And I want you to think about that for a moment. You know what I mean? God gives us a crazy imagination. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's people out there that when I watch the different discovery movies and different things, I see people on the internet all the time inventing this, doing that, coming up with all this crazy stuff. You know what I mean? Do uh, you know you ever watch the movie Chopped? The yeah. show Chopped? Yeah. They give you a basket of crazy stuff off the wall, chicken legs, yeah. you know, cinnamon wine, yeah. you know, uh, salary and something else, and you're going to come up with a dish. How many know that takes imagination? Right. What in the world are we going to do with chicken legs and, and red wine or cinnamon wine and, and salary and, and, you know, what, how are we going to do that? These people... For a moment, they think and immediately start, okay, well, let me go grab this and let me do that and let me get a couple of this and we'll put some breadcrumbs in here and we'll make this, you know, soup or dish or whatever it is, you know what I mean? And they use their imagination. See, you do it for work. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hello. You're right, man. You use your imagination. You use your wisdom for work. Yeah. And you make your boss lots of money. Yeah. Hello. You're right. I told you earlier, he's our boss. Right, he's ultimately our boss. Yeah, we right, work right. for him. Yeah. You with me? And he wants you to use your imagination to reach souls for him. And I'll show you in the end. That's what his that's what his desire is. That's what God's vision is. Yeah. This church is <laughs> jam-packed with souls. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, God's God's vision is to, for this church. And every other God-fearing church in our city to be jam-packed with souls. Amen. That's his vision. Amen. You with me? That's his. That's what God imagined. See, for God so loved the world, he imagined, imagined souls. And he said, Samiko, you're going to have to go. Because they're not listening to the prophets. They're not listening to the preachers. Mijo, I'm going to send you to go to, to the world to go preach to them. And eventually they killed his son on the cross. But God said, through the death of my son, I'm going to reach many souls. He used his imagination. He used everything he was. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, too, that by, by faith, God spoke into existence things that didn't even exist. Amen. He created the world out of nothing. Amen. He used his imagination. He used his wisdom to speak life. Hello. Amen. To speak into existence things that weren't there. Right, right. Hello. Amen. You with me? And God has given us that same imagination and stuff for His glory and His honor. See, we've been created in His image. Right. In God's likeness. You were created. See, you ain't that. You ain't all that in a bag of chips. Yeah. You just take after your daddy. <laughs> Hello. Right, man. Huh? You're just like him. Haven't you ever heard you? You're just like your father, man. Huh? He said, man, gee, sorry, eh? Huh? Maybe some of us have never even met our father. Yeah. You with me? And yet we're just like him. Hmm? Yeah. Why? Because his DNA is inside of us. Right. And when you get born again, guess what? Born again. You get born again. Right. New DNA. Right. Now you have his imagination. Now you have his wisdom. Right, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Guess what his wisdom is? The word. Amen. You have this plan in front of you. You have this awesome book in front of you. 
that gives you imagination, gives you understanding of great things. Hello. Right. Huh? Right. He makes you wiser than your family members, right, than your brothers and your sisters, or even your parents who have been educated higher than you in all this. And just by reading your word, he gives you greater imagination and understanding and wisdom than they have. Than your teachers, than your professors. Amen. Hello, Amen. you're able to bring to to nothing. The, you're, you know what I mean? With with even the foolishness that we have, we're, we're able to confound the wisdom of men. Amen. Amen. Because God gives us this this understanding, this wisdom, this, this mindset hmm? to believe in Christ. Right. Hmm? Right. That's what God gives us. Amen. Amen. So let me read it one more time. Vision. Is the ability to think about, to think about, to think about, or plan. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we don't plan for anything. And John Maxwell is a great, great, great inspirational speaker, but also as a pastor. I mean, this guy speaks to the greatest corporations in the nation, in the world, in the nation. And he says, man, if you don't plan for, for something, he said, you've already failed. If you don't make a plan to do something, see, you got some plans right now, right? Oh, my New Year's resolution is this and that. But hey, uh, Habakkuk, remember the other night I said to Habakkuk, I think it was chapter two, where he said, write down the vision, make it plain, yeah. so that all might see it, can read it, and run with that vision. Yeah. You know, uh, Amway, you know, the, 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 what do they call it? The, 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 not scam, but the yeah. pyramid, pyramid uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Scheme? Amway, Amway is one of them, where, you know what I mean, I go and I do something, and then I get Oscar and, and, and Alex to work for me, and they go and they get two or four or 20 more, and everybody who they touch invest, invest in them, and eventually it comes to me. You with me? Yeah. But they also get blessed, so they go out, and them 20 go out and make 80 more. And everything that then 40 get, you know, that from the 80, the 20, the two, you know, the few get, then the main one on the bottom gets the lot too. Yeah. It's a pyramid scheme. You with me? Yeah. But these people, one of the things that I remember my buddy was in Amway, and what he would do was he would take a, a, a let's just say, for instance, a Ferrari or something, or a big four bedroom house, three story house, and he would take his vision, right, and he would put it on his refrigerator. Remember, make the vision plain, keep it before you. Do you remember in Deuteronomy 6 where he says to do that with the word, to write the word upon your hands? Yeah. He said to put it on frontless between thine eyes so you can see the word constantly, 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 constantly seeing the word. Write it on the doorposts of your house and even on the gates of your homes. Write the word. Why? So you can see it. Yeah. That's why I tell people, read the Bible out loud. Why? So you can hear it. Not only see it, but hear it. Yeah. And maybe somebody else in the next room or next door will hear you reading the Word of God because at the entry of the Word, it brings forth light. Yeah. But it brings faith to you. Yeah. And you got those pictures and you got those images. This is what I want. I want my family saved. I remember somebody taught me, they said, I want you to take the, your Bible and in the front of your Bible, write down several names that you want God to save this year. You know one of those names was? Andrea, Andrea Rodriguez. My cousin Andrea. God said, write her name. I said, I don't even really talk to Andrea. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't go down my marriage no more. I don't really see it. I don't really know what's going on in her life. Why would you have me write Andrea? To just write it down. And I wrote down her name in my Bible and it said to pray for her. And with, a, with some other people in my family. Yeah. And every day I pray for them and say, God save her. Huh? Yeah. One day she by chance walked into one of our Thanksgiving services. Yeah. And I, we did a little haphazard skit of my testimony. Four of us, man, four of us guys, and you know, I mean, we put some chairs down, pretending we were in the car cruising and talking silly and acting like cholos and all this stuff. We had some music and, uh, you know, this and that, and I, I, I ended sharing a little bit of my testimony. And we were downstairs at a big church. 
that I had the vision for. Hello. Amen. That I went, I went by one day, seen this big old church, and I said, God, I want that church just like this church. Yeah. When this church was being remodeled, I went by, seen the vision, seen the remodeling, seen landscaping. And my wife said, that building's going to be for rent. Yeah. And I said, them people are fixing it up for me. Yeah. She laughed. I said, them people are remodeling that and landscaping it for me. Wow. We're here tonight. We own this building. Mm -hmm. We went into that big building. We had our kitchen. Our, ki our hall was bigger than this. Just the hall alone. And then we had a co commercial kitchen in there too. We're doing a drama. We're doing a, my testimony. And I said, you're here tonight, man. We did that clip for the skit, man. It went out <laughs> haphazard. But we got the message out. See, that's, what's, that's what matters. Amen. Do foolish things. and Get the message out there. Make yourself look like a fool. Whatever you got to do to preach the gospel, let them laugh at you. Yeah, Preaching the gospel. Amen. You don't even know it. Yeah. You with me? And you're getting the word. And little did I know that I said, you're here tonight. You know what I mean? And I just throw it out there. You know, sometimes it's the same old ones, but I never knew it was there. We had a couple of new people here for, for New Year's Eve. Yeah. Hmm? I don't know if any of them prayed a prayer to get saved. And, you know, well, who knows? You with me? But I said, you're here tonight, man. You, you, you want to get saved, give your life to Jesus. I didn't know what, anything about Andrea's life. But now, I, but now I know her story, how she was hurting and crying herself to sleep, saying, God, I just wish I had somebody that would love me like that. And she came to the front. She came weeping to the front of the, to the little stage that we had made up. And she gave her life to Jesus. And not only that, because of her salvation, here comes my Aunt Mary with her to support her. And my Aunt Mary gave her life to Jesus Christ. She got saved that night. Amen. 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 All because of vision. Yeah. Huh? Right. Yeah, All because I wanted to perform a, a skit and give the people there a vision of what I went through and a vision how God saved my life. I used my imagination. That's what we do here. That's what I did. How many of you enjoyed that? God's treasure chest. Man. That, I, I never did anything like that in my life. But guess what? I have a, I have an imagination. And I told you, I, was, I, I could do what Steve Harvey does. Hmm? I, I mean, I know I'll never be as good as him or anything, but I can. Uh, God gave me gifts. Right. And I'm going to use my gifts not for myself, not to promote Vince Diaz. To promote, to promote Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to use my imagination and I'm going to do whatever I can because who knows who's out there watching, you know what I mean, the YouTube or Facebook or whatever, and they're saying, well, check this out. Hmm? Right. One person said, a kid in Denver, one of our people that used to come to our church was in Denver, and their little cousin said, hey, I seen you guys as a YouTube thing, man. I seen your pastor on YouTube. Really, she said? Because yeah, I was flipping through the YouTube, you know, and finding stuff to watch. And it came on your pastor. I said, hey, I know that church. I know that guy. And he started watching one of my sermons. And then he got convicted. And he went, you've changed it, you know. But when he changed it, it didn't change. He got stuck on my thing for the whole sermon. He wasn't able to change it. And that's just something that I said I would love to do. And I knew one day, I said, I'm going to be on TV. And everybody laughed. I didn't know it would be It may not be public broadcasting, but it's being broadcasted. Yeah. And people all over the world can look at it. And that little kid locked into my sermon that night, and he watched the whole thing. He said, I couldn't get off until it was over. I said, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. All because of imagination, all because of wisdom. Oh, gosh, give me creative uh, ideas, witty inventions, God. How to reach people for you. Because we got all these plans and ideas how to better our life. Well, if I go to college, if I get a better degree, if I get a better job, if I do this, if I use that one, if I do that, we got this big old plan for our own lives, but we won't do that for God. And that's all He wants. Amen. That's all He wants is for us to use the, the, the wisdom that He's given us. I was, I was teaching, or I was watching. I think it was God's treasure chest I watched with my wife when she was talking and stuff. And I said, you know, my wife was, I don't think she even, I think she started the 10th grade and she never finished because she was pregnant. She had to drop out and she had to go 
take care of our daughter, Paulette, and different things. And I said, you know what? My wife runs this church in the ministry. She keeps the books. She, she does all this stuff for a church, for a ministry, for an organization she never was trained to do. Yeah, and she does it with all her heart, and she does a good job. And I said, there's people out there that have been in accounting and all this stuff that can last. They wouldn't know what to do. And they don't know how to live by faith. Yeah. Huh? Right. And I said, so they would never make it. I said, my wife is one of the most amazing women that I've ever met. And I know. Was, and I've seen her grow up. Yeah. And I look back when she was 14. I look back when that now when she's 52 years old. And I look and I see this woman that's like fine wine, man. Yeah. That's aged. Perfectly. Amen. And become, and man, I'm telling you that I would put her against any woman in this world. Amen. Any princess, any, any, you know, congresswoman, anything like that. And I say, you know what? You have a challenge on your hands there, man, because this woman right here is anointed by God. Amen. With a 10th grade education. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Using her imagination. Dude, I, I just found something today that was a video or something on the Young Women of Destiny. It's a thing she did. She said, I want to do this. I want to reach out to young girls that are 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. And I want to have something just for them. And I want them to feel special. I want to bless these young girls. And she said, and she, well, you know, she said, I want to have a makeover for two of them. Sorry. And she said, you know, we're going to rent a hall. We rented the, the what's it, downtown? The hotel there? Marriott Hotel? Is that what it is? Right there first? And yeah. We rented the, the hall there at Marriott Hotel. And we had a woman, uh, a young woman of destiny. And man, we had to pay for that. Nobody blessed us. Nobody gave us anything. We paid for that uh, room. And we had them. We, we had young women all over. We didn't even know. We just, I don't even know how we contacted them. We just said, if you're here, if you're out there and you, you know, we want to invite you to these young women of destiny, please register. You can come. Uh, it was free. You know, we're going to feed you and we're going to give two of you a makeover. And we're going to, you know, I mean, we, we had sessions in the day. We talked to them about Jesus, about boyfriends and all the different stuff, man. You know, and then two of them were lucky girls, and they got my wife. My wife took them to Ross, gave them a makeover, clothes, Amen. brought them back, and I don't know who it was, but somebody—I think it was my daughter—somebody did their hair. Yeah. One of the girls did their makeup. They came in one way, left a whole different way, new outfit, everything on. Bless, man! And everybody else received little uh, presents and prizes and. All this stuff, and my wife ministered to them and prayed for many of those young girls. Told them, listen, you don't need all this junk of boys and all this stuff. Know who you are first in God. Know that God loves you. Amen. Amen. How did that happen? Because, you know, some organization came in and did it for us? No, it was all through imagination and wisdom. God, use us. <laughs> and I was watching Al the other night as Al did the... The, the, the video of all the pictures just of this year. Amen. And I remember 2018, 2017, 2016, 2000. I don't remember when it was we went to the Dream Center, but I remember taking a bunch of you to LA, to the Dream Center, right downtown uh, LA, man, and, and feeding the home, you know, hungry and doing all this stuff, man. It was crazy. We had a great time. Yeah. But I remember we did a video and all that in different years. I said, do you realize how many people we've touched as a church? Amen. Even if we're small, we've touched hundreds of thousands of people through this church. Amen. And the devil would like to say, you guys ain't doing nothing. Yeah. Hmm? Who, who's he going to tell that to? It looks the people that are doing something. Right. Huh? Amen. Hi. How are you doing there? When I told you earlier, I said, you know what? Everything we do is through vision. It's through, it's through you know what I mean? Hey, we need to do this rally. Hey, what do you think? Can you get some donations? Can you do that? Man, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's right, man. Mm -hmm. So we can put something together. So what? The 200 people can come through here and 100, I don't know how many kids get brand new toys. Huh? Get, get, get brand new toys from, from, from not Santa, but from Jesus? Amen. Hmm? Amen. And from the organizations who believe in this church. Amen. Organizations and people who said, we trust you, New Hope Ministries. 
we trust you because they don't realize we've been around almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. We've been in this community. We've married and we've buried and we so much their families. You talk about New Hope Ministries, everybody knows that everybody that hasn't met as a disgruntled <laughs> congregant knows that church is blessing, man. I remember when that pastor got up there, when my cousin died, when my brother died, when my mom died, when my little sister, when my son, we buried my, you, you with me? And, and he preached, man, and he said this. Amen. Hmm? Gang members will never forget me. Yeah. Bloods and huh? yeah, no, cribs. I've done so many, or, or the dukes, funerals. You with me? Yeah, that church over there, I, mean, I know that church. Why? Through imagination, through wisdom, through vision. Amen. Amen. God, we want to touch it. We want to, we want to reach our city, God. Amen. The thing is, we can't see it. We can't see all the accomplishment. We can't see everything we've ever done. Yeah. I talked to one pastor from Grand Junction just the other day. He faced up, booked me a, a message, and he said, I said, man, I'm so proud of you, Ethan, for what, what you've done in your life, where God brought you from, and what he's doing in your life now. He goes, Pastor, he goes, I've come a long way since PYC, huh? Amen. This guy's got a church of maybe 200 people, maybe more. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I mean, he was a young gangster. What he was 13 from uh, Monte Vista, man. Today he's pastoring hundreds of people affecting Grand Junction, Colorado, Amen. and more Amen. for Jesus. Amen. Because this man was working in a PYC facility as a temporary guard. Told him, hey, Mio, let me talk to you, bro. Is it right if I come in your room? I said, hey, I seen you. You were fighting. You kicked that dude in the face, man. That's not right, bro. I said, you know what? God loves you, man. And you know what? God can change you. You don't have to be like that, bro. Huh? Prayed with him. And when I seen him a few months later, he was out in Alamosa. And I was sharing my story, my testimony. And after the, I seen a guy running down the aisle, man, leaped over things and came to grab me and hug me and tell me that he gave his life to Jesus. And I'm like, wow, you're the same kid I led to the Lord in there. Hmm? For the day is pastor, and I'm telling you, a powerful church in Grand Junction. Yeah. And that's just one man that we've touched. Right. Yeah. Hello, that is touching hundreds, if not thousands, for Christ Himself yeah. Yeah. and His people that He leads. Yeah. You with me? Not to mention the others who we've been a part of, we've sent to the home, we've invested in their lives, or whatever it was. Yeah. And we've trained up. We got the privilege the other day to see a couple that were in our church for a long time. And I said, I'm going to go. I said, I didn't recognize them. I can't see that good. You know what I mean? So they were like saying something. And I'm like, yeah, hey. I said, who was that? She said, that's so and so. I was like, oh, really? So I ordered and waited a minute. And I said, I'm going to go sit by. I just <laughs> sat right by them and started talking to them. <laughs> you know. And, and then when they, then when I, my food came up, I went and eat and all this, and they're walking out and saying, bye, happy new year. And then the guy comes by and he says, hey, I just wanted to let you know you, you've been paid for, your bill's paid for. Yeah. New Year's yeah. Day, I said, man, ain't that a good way to start New Year's? Yeah. And the people that you've invested in, the people that you loved and trained up are now providing for you, yeah. blessing you. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And helping you out. I said, man, thank you, Jesus. See, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. That's right. Amen. Hello. Amen. I don't think they heard that. Amen. I said, whatever you sow, right. that means you gave. Yeah. That means you did. Yeah. That means you went. Right. That yeah. means you loved. Right. That yeah. means you invested. Yeah. That means you did Bible study with them. That means you prayed for them. Right. As a matter of fact, the guys, the guys had one of his kids with him. I said, well, how are you? And he said, I'm five, cute little kid. And I remember the first time when they first got married. And the, and the husband uh, or the wife, she was so discouraged because she couldn't have a baby. And I remember, I don't know what it was, just one day I was praying and we were having service and I looked at her and I said, come here, I want to pray for you. And I said, about this time next year, you're going to have a son. And I prayed for her, we blessed her, and she was so excited, so fired up. And guess what happened a few months later? She got pregnant. Amen. And guess what happened within a year? 
He had a baby. Huh? And today he works. Today, guess what he's doing? Going to Bible college. Hello? Is this big? Going to Bible college. You know what he's doing, David, in his church? He's running the production of his ministry. He's running cameras. He's running sound. He's over the different people. Hello? Huh? The one that I said, next year at this time, you're going to have a child. I better watch when I'm saying that point now. Uh -oh. yeah. I don't want to prophesy nothing. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Vision's dangerous, man. You gotta be careful, man. Huh? You know, you know what I was doing, Lord. Ah, oh, Jesus. How many of you ever ever heard this? Hindsight's twenty twenty. Uh, Why? I put because now you see clearly what what happened. Hmm? Hindsight's twenty twenty. That means what already happened, you can look back and say, oh, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? If I would have only known then what I know now, yeah. that's hindsight. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. That's being able to see clearly what happened already. Yeah. And then you, and then nothing you can do about it. Right. Vision <laughs> is the ability to look forward right. with, into the future with imagination. With the wisdom of God. How do we get the wisdom? How do we get the imagination in His Word? Huh? I still sit around. I'll still listen. I'll still read along with my phone, the Bible. I'll still listen to different ministers all day long. What am I doing? I'm filling. I'm filling my mind. I'm filling my heart. I'm filling it even when I don't want to. Right. See, anybody can do it when you, you know, I feel like reading the Bible. I feel like, no, no, no. But when you don't feel like doing it, that's when it means the most. Right, when you, man, you're so, oh, I don't even know what life is happening. And it's get in the Word. Shut your mouth. Get in the book. Amen. And read. Read it out loud. Amen. Hello. Right, read the Hebrews 11. <laughs> the Hall of Faith. And read how God used Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Sarah and, and, and Noah and hello Amen. people of God who trusted God without seeing they believed him. Amen. Remember I preached just the other night and I said Abraham was called to go go where he said I don't know just follow me woman. Hmm? That's the way I've always lived my life. That's my wife, man. If she needs deserving of any praise or anything, she just trusted me. Where are we going? I don't know. Just get in. Huh? Amen. We're just going for Jesus. Amen. We didn't know 19 and 18 years old. We just started going to church. We wanted to hang around people who love Jesus. We were sick of the world. See, some of you are not sick yet of the world. So you still have these connections with the past and with them people. Don't realize they're holding you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what your vision and what you believe and all this stuff until you cut it loose you're not going to be able to do anything because right, right. hmm? we're still hanging around and still wanting to be around the, the secular mindset and I always heard this man he would preach and he would say how are you going to soar on eagles wings man he said when well, you're hanging around a bunch of turkeys <laughs> man. Hmm? See, so God called you to soar. He said, they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings like eagles. Have you ever seen eagles? Study them. Go to YouTube. Go find different things and watch an eagle in flight. Watch an eagle. It takes in the majesticness of that eagle and the glory of that eagle as he soars and flies. And then go watch. Go look at a bunch of turkeys. Yeah. They're ugly. Yeah. And do you know the turkeys that we eat all the Christmas and then you know that one of the filthiest animals? Uh -huh. Hmm? Yeah. And we're still hanging around a bunch of turkeys talking about, I got a new hope. Try man. Uh, you got a new hope. What are you doing here? Try man. Hello. Try man. You serve God, you go for Jesus. What are you doing hanging around the same Marquels? Read Psalms 1. Yeah. Hmm? Right. They're going to be keep you in that mindset because they, they're going to be instilling their values and their morals and their, their convictions into you. And telling you all what they believe and what they think instead of the Word of God. 
Right. Blessed, he said, is the man that walks not in the counsel of them turkeys, nor stands in the way of them turkeys, Amen. nor sits in the seat of the turkeys, Amen. but whose delight, whose plan, I mean, everything you enjoy is that word of God. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And I said, man, God, that's See, I try and promote the evening service all the time. Yeah. I said, there's a good promotion day and night. Amen. Amen. Wow. <laughs> he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, yeah. whose leaves shall not wither. Yeah. He with me, brings forth fruit in his own season. Yeah. And whatever he does, he shall prosper. Amen. Yeah. He said, but they are wicked and the ungodly are not so, but are like chaff driven by the wind. Hmm? Yeah. Driven away, nothing they do. There's a scripture that says the, the my people perish for a lack of vision. You with me? Yeah. My people perish because they have they cast off their restraints. Hmm? Yeah. Because they don't have the word of God in them and they don't honor that word of God. And it's like chaff. <sighs> It just goes into the wind, and nothing comes of your spiritual life. Right. Hmm? Because you want to soar, you want to hang, you want to see. It's really important who you hang around with. Right, yeah. It's really important who you're listening to. Right. And I always tell people, too, I don't care if it's the person to your left and the person to your right. Somebody's got to live for Jesus. Wow. You right. can't be there cliff and clam or, you know... Uh, what do you think? Well, I think it's wrong too. I, I don't know what Patrick said. I don't know what all those tontos and go nowhere in life but to the table to be eaten right. like a turkey. Yeah, you don't ever hear, have you ever heard of anybody having, you know, equal dinner? No. No? Do you know that it's a crime, a federal crime to touch an eagle, to do anything to an eagle, to even have an eagle talent around your mirror in your car or even have it in your possession? You'll go to federal prison for that? Yeah. Why not for a turkey leg? <laughs> huh? Come on now. Hmm? He said, mount up with wings of eagles, man. You're going to run for God and you'll never grow weary. You're going to walk for Jesus and you'll never faint. That's right, man. Hmm? Amen. Come on now. Yeah. Hmm? Why? Because them things are majestic. Them things soar, man. And you know that the eagles, they usually fly alone. Sometimes I feel lonely, man. I don't know, some of you think we feel lonely and this and that. You bring it into sexuality. You have nothing to do with sexuality, what you are as a, with, as a man or a woman of God. That's why you feel lonely. And your relationship with Jesus doesn't have nothing to do with sex at all. Right. Because if that was the case, it would be a bunch of married people all jacked up in their thinking and their hearts, and they're still lonely. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. These sores on eagles, we do all the time you only go around this woman just to make babies. Yeah. And he made in the air. <laughs> and then he's on his way later. <laughs> I'm on a mission, man. I'm sorry, I'm doing this. And if you just stop, it's in the clefts and the high places. Hmm? Mm -hmm. You're able to look down with that eagle vision and see in the water, there's a big fat old fish, and I am a little hungry right now. <laughs> Snatch it up. Hmm? Bring it back to his lair. Bring it just kick back in the clefts of the he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. He's my refuge, my fortress. Come on now. Yeah. Hides me under his feathers, under his wings shall I. You with me? <coughs> abide. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Right, because I vision, because I'm, I'm believing God, because God's lifting me up. You ever heard that song? I never realized that it was a Christian song, but it's Lord lift, love lift me up where we belong. Remember that song? Yeah. I said, man, that's a Christian song. Yeah. Hmm? God lift me up. Lord, I don't belong down here with these turkeys. Man. Oh, gobbling and complaining and murmuring and backbiting. And, oh, what are you? I don't go to church either, bro. Oh, you know, nah, I don't go to church. I don't have to be a Christian. That, Stay there, man. You can come turkey dinner next Christmas if you want. And your life will be cut short. Right. I saw an eagle's wings. 
And when I get old, you know what the Eagles do? I don't know why I'm telling you this, but the Eagles, one, one of the things they do is they'll lose their beak. You with me? And the thing about them is once they lose their beak, guess what? God renews it. They lose their feathers, God renews them. He said, I'll renew your youth as the eagles. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hello. Amen. I'll give you vision. I'll give you purpose. I want you to soar. I ain't calling you to be down here with these cliffers. Amen. I called you to soar on high, soar above. Use the problems to lift you higher, not destroy you. Amen. Hmm? Amen. 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 Vision. I want vision like an eagle. You know, if eagles have like 20 or better than 20 20 vision, hmm? yeah. they can see perfectly from miles away different things. Amen? Amen. Hindsight's 20 20. Why? Because you can see after <laughs> what had happened. Amen? Amen? The hard thing about spiritual vision, and that's what I'm talking about, is that God may give you, amen, the, the, uh, the final outcome. God may give you the final outcome, amen, but doesn't tell you what you're going to go through to get there. That's right. Or even where you're going to go. That's right. You with me? Amen. And I was thinking about that today, and I said, Lord, and I was preaching to myself, and I was just thinking about this, and I said, Lord, in, 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 and I have it written down here. I know it's Genesis. I don't want to. Genesis chapter 31, 37. Do you remember when God gave Joseph a dream? Joseph was one of the youngest children of, of Jacob. God gave him a dream. And jo Jacob's, uh, Joseph's dream was that, uh, I don't know what I did. His dream was that the first dream that he had, he said, I was around sheathing or, 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 or doing the wheat, bundling up wheat. And he says, man, my, me and my 11 brothers were out there bundling up wheat. And he says, and, and it was a trip because I stood, my, my, my bundle of wheat stood upright. I don't know if you've ever seen wheat. wheat. You know, they bundle it, they gather it. It's, pretty tall. He said, mine stood upright. He said, but all the other 11 bowed down to me. Speaking of his brothers. Yeah. And he told his brothers, yeah. guess what? I had a dream and you guys were bowing down to me. Oh, they hated him. The Bible says in 37, it says his brothers hated him for that. See, we think everybody's going to love us because we got saved. We don't drink no more. We don't, we're not stealing from their purse no more. Come on, selling their television set or burning their for their old lady. They, you know, they you think, man, you be nice to me now. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Oh, no, not everybody. A lot of your family hates you. You don't even know it. Right, yeah. They all, you with me, bowed down to him and he had the, he was, he had the, I would just say, naiveness. He was naive and went and told him the vision. Yeah. And they hated him for it. And then it says that he had a second dream. It said that he looked and said, I think he said there were 11 stars and the sun and the moon bowed down to him. And they said, oh, now your father's going to bow down to you and your mother too? And us, your brothers? And it said they burned with hatred for Joseph. And daddy loved Joseph too. He gave him a coat of many colors. You with me? He loved Joseph. He was his favorite. And they hated him because of that too. And one day, I guess, remember, his, you're going to bow down to me. I'm 17 years old here, Joseph. He's 17 years old. And his brothers and them hated him. And they went out, he went out to a field to check on him and take him some food. And when he did, they said, here comes the dreamer. Let's end his dreams. There's a lot of snatchers out there want to snatch the dream from you. See, there's a lot of people that want to snatch my dream from me. Because oh, yeah. hmm? yeah. God gave me a dream. He gave me a vision even for this ministry. Yeah. You with me? And there's a lot of people that would go out and even other ministers that would say negative and say different about it. Just dream snatchers, I call them. 
not the dream casters, the dream snatchers. Yeah. And they hate you, and they want to destroy you, and they want to talk about you, and say all manner of evil to destroy your name in the city. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, and they grabbed Joseph when he came, threw him into a pit. I said, I wonder if Joseph ever thought of this in his vision, in his dream. Did, they, did God say anything about a pit? No. What in the world? Did God say my own family? My brothers are going to be the ones that the enemy uses to throw me into a pit to kill me? Hello? Right. Huh? Right. All he showed him was the end result. That's all God showed him, and that's all he shows us. Yeah. He gave me a vision, as I told you earlier. He showed me great things. He showed me a great church. Yeah. And I said, man, I, I don't know. I, I think, I think we're, you just show me a pit, Lord. Hmm? So Joseph thought he was going to go from the palace, from the from the promise or the dream to the palace to the kingship, but he didn't really know anything about that either. Right. Right. All he knew was one day my brother going to bow down to me. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. They threw him in the pit and they tried to kill him. They were going to kill him, and then they finally ended up selling him. <coughs> Seventeen years old into slavery, he goes into Egypt, and there he's he's bought as a slave. Right. You with me? As a slave, he was a king's kid. He was a prince of Egypt, man. And that is, I mean, this wasn't in my dream. I just was in the victory. I just was in the top. I was just reaping the benefits. Nobody said nothing about a pit or prison. That's right. That's right. Nobody said nothing about being accused of rape. That's right. Huh? Yeah. Nobody said nothing about it. That, that, you know what I mean? But it said, wherever Joseph went to prison, the Lord was with him. He was with him in that prison cell. He was with him in his work there at the prison. And are you with me? And eventually, years later, he's in there and he's using his gifts right where he is. Where are you at tonight? Where are you working? What are you doing now? So you got to use your gifts where you're at right now. You can't hear, well, one day I'm going to be this, and one day I'm going to be preaching a, with a women's home, and one day I want to be a youth pastor, and one day, I see you can't worry about one day. you got to do what your hands find to do now. Amen. And he's interpreting dreams in the prison. Yeah. What happened? You're the baker, you're the cup bearer. What happened? Hey, I can tell you what that means, man. Let me go pray. Let me let me read the let me study. Let me let me let me fast for a little bit and I'll come back and I'll tell you what that means. He used his gifts right there where he was. Amen. He didn't say, I can't believe this. Forget God. Throw me in this situation. I've been in that dungeon. I cried out to God in that dungeon. Different than the way Joseph was, but I was in that dungeon. <laughs> Saying, God, I don't understand, and I'm crying out to God. You see, you haven't even started until you've been there. Until you've been so frustrated, you're crying somewhere all by yourself, and you don't know what in the world's going on, and it feels like the whole world has ended. And you're broken. Thank God I don't understand. And God's saying, You are God to you. Mm -hmm. You're right where I want you. Amen. Hmm? Right. Amen. And he said, Man, I can interpret your dreams. And the guy who was a cupbearer and was restored back to his cupbearer position. And the other one was killed. And Joseph told him, he said, hey, bro, remember me. Remember me, bro, because you know what? I'm here on a, on a, on a messed up charge, man. <coughs> huh? Yeah, and he started, and what I tell people is he tried to get himself out of the situation. Yeah. He tried doing it on his own, intervening for himself, saying, hey, bro, maybe you can help me. If God can. Yeah. God's like, who? Really? <laughs> Bible says for two more years. I believe he could have got out after that. Yeah. But the Bible says for two more years, Joseph stood in prison until one day the Pharaoh had a dream. And Joseph saying, man, or, or the, or, or, or the cupbearer is there ministering to his, to his prince, you know, and, and, and he's like frustrated, he can't sleep and all this stuff. He's like, what's wrong? He's like, I had a dream. Nobody could tell me, not even my magicians. Forgive me. What's wrong? Oh, your majesty. I remember when I was in Canyon City. That's right. 
there was this dude in there that spoke to me and gave me the revelation of the dream I had. And he told me I'd be set free. And look, I'm back here today. Maybe he can interpret your dream. Get him. Huh? Yeah. I think that Joseph stood in prison. I tell people that from my estimation, it was at least 17 years. He was 17 years old. He must have been about 34 years old, still in the joint. He had no chance of getting out until something happened. Amen. He could have got out maybe at 32, but he opened his mouth and tried to help himself. How many of you ever try to help yourself and get yourself stuck and been in trouble more than you? You could have been helped earlier. Right. Remember Abraham? He tried to help the Lord. Yeah. Right. Went with Hagar, uh, the young maiden, yeah, yeah. to make babies. Yeah. And he brought a son of the flesh. And do you know today that there's Israel and there's, um, what's his name? Um, Ishmael. Ishmael and, and what was the other one's name? Uh, was it Israel? The two nations are still alive today. Right. Who, is, who is Israel's biggest enemy if it isn't the Middle East, if it isn't Iraq and Iran? Hmm? If it isn't Afghanistan? These are Ishmaelites and they're still attacking the Israelites. They're throwing bombs. They're trying to kill the Israelites still today, 2020. Right, man. Something that Abraham said, I'm going to help God do. How many years ago? 4,000? A lot of years ago. Right, man. And they're still affecting Israel today. I bet you never knew that. Hmm? That Jacob and Esau, or, or no, excuse me, it wasn't Jacob, it was Israel and Ishmael. Guess who Joseph got sold to? Ishmaelite traders. Ain't that a trip how the devil has conveniently placed people in your life? Huh? Yeah, right. Who you think are brothers or friends or my homies? The devil says, yeah, they're your homies. Hmm? Come on now. Yeah, she's the woman in your dreams. Huh? Yeah, so is Delilah. Go to sleep, my love. Well, she was a barber too, David. <laughs> Love you. Yeah. Go to sleep. Yeah. He got up. Hair sword like David's. He said, what in the world? Nothing. It's important that you hang around with her. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Joseph was sold and the Israelites eventually went to become a slave in Egypt and eventually got busted and accused of rape, ends up in prison for 17 years. He could have been out at 15, I think, but he tried to help himself. And two years later, the guy remembered him. See, because <laughs> God may discipline you, but he'll never forget you. Right, man. I, I, I preached a message on Joseph called Forsaken, uh, but Never Forgotten. That God might forget about you or not forget about you. He might leave you in there for a while. Yeah. How many know it's where our kids learn the best when they do some time? Right, man. You want to play? Go back to prison. Go back to jail. No, 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 no. I don't want to go back. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. He's like, preach the best forsaken but not forget, forgotten. Two years later, that guy forsook him. That guy forgot about him, but God never did. Right. And one day they said, hey, come here, bro. We need you in the palace. No. Come on, let's go get, we're going to shower you up. And we got you some old spice body wash. Man, I had to use dirt. I had to use anything, man, rocks and stuff to try and get clean. And now I got this body wash kit with underarm deodorant and aftershave. What's up with that? Don't worry about it. Here's this new champion sweatsuit. Huh? Okay. With pastors red champion shoes and a chain, brother. 
Two chains, they get his name like that. That, that Joseph was the original two chains. Uh. Wearing the gold, walking in to the kingdom, to the palace. What's going on here? He didn't understand. He was put in Genesis, I think it was 41. Genesis 41. He was he was put as a king's uh, like an armor bearer, like the second in command of the whole nation. They hooked him up with royal robes, man, and cold chains, and, and even a baby doll, bro. Hello, the king's sister-in-law, one of the finest chicks in the land. Come here, man, do you remember the other day you they talked to you, you want a man and this and that, come over here, man, check this dude out. Joseph was one of the finest in Israel. Hello. See, I was even golfing when she got so excited. <laughs> It says that he was good to look at, comely, all this to man. He had pecs and six pack and gorgeous Israelite, man. Might be even green eyes. Hair going back, all tearing. She said, You said you wanted a husband? Come here, man. Hooked him up right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And guess what? In Genesis chapter 42, it says, Remember Genesis, what is it, 37 we started it? Genesis 42 it says that Joseph was Joseph was placed as a, as a prince of Egypt, or he was placed as second in command. And in 42, it says that guess what? He was over the land. Remember the dream he interpreted? Seven years of blessing, prosperity, and seven years of famine. So save up, King. Do all this. Store away for the seven years of famine are coming so we could have enough not only to have for ourselves, but to sell to everybody in the world that comes to us. And guess who's over everything, Joseph? Because hmm? sometimes when you're over stuff, and when, sometimes when you help, and sometimes when you're here for the dinner or whatever it is, or for giveaways, and stuff, sometimes, guess what? You're going to eat from that, too. Amen. Hmm? And guess who came knocking on the door? Ten brothers. Yeah. They walked in. Joseph, they didn't know who he was because God had done amazing things in him. Yeah. He was like little Oski had the perm going on on top. Hello. <laughs> Wearing the finest royal robes, probably makeup in, the, in, in Egypt. They would dress all weird and wear hats and all this gold and stuff. So they had no idea who he was, but he knew exactly who they were. They were the brothers that sold me into slavery. You guys did this. Right. And it says that he ran out of the room and he wept and he wept and he wept. And I think he was praying and saying, God, forgive me for all this bitterness towards these brothers of mine. I had a hound kill for what they did to me. 17 years I stood in the joint for them, Lord. But he said that he loved his brothers. Uh, Amen. Uh, love Amen. covers a multitude of sins. Amen. He says that he loved them. And he played a few Amen. little games with them. Yeah. But guess what the ten did? They came in and they bowed to him. Wow. Yeah. And I was thinking today, I said, God, I wonder if he knew back then. I know he didn't know. Because God don't tell you the end. God, or he don't tell you the middle. In Nicola, we're going to go from A to Z. I'm the Alpha and Omega. Okay, Lord Pedro. The middle. What do I do? That's where the faith comes in. That's where the that's where the vision comes in. Yeah. That's where, remember, it was imagination and it was wisdom. Yeah. His word is the wisdom of God. Amen. Hello. Amen. I need your word to guide me and I trust in the Lord, my wife said, with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, Mio, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. I gotta trust in Jesus. Amen. That's what his word says. Amen. Hmm? I wonder how he felt when they're bowing down to him. I wonder how he felt because he played a trick and sent him home. Did you go get my 11th brother? Because remember it says about 11 stars bowing down to him. And the sun and the moon, which was his brother, his, his father and mother, but his mother had died. Yeah. And I said, yeah, but you know what I mean? I, I, if I'm not mistaken, he still had it, Leah. Yeah. And I said, I don't know if Leah had passed away, but he, you know, you know, these guys are like my grandpa. You know what I mean? They'll find another wife. Yeah. I said, so he had to have a lady with him that came. 
and their dad and the eleven brothers all bowed before Joseph. And I said, Wow, Lord. I said, where, where do you think God draws us to the place where he's, he's commanding a nation? He's able to forgive. He's able to be fair. He's able to be just. He's able to see the need and be compassionate. How do you think he learned all that if it wasn't the joint, if it wasn't the prison? Right. So he went from the promise to the palace, but he had to go to the prison to get there. Right. And I said, you know what vision will do? It'll carry you through the, to the, to the, through the prison. Vision will carry you through the hard times. Right. Vision, spiritual, uh, are you with me? Vision, understanding and wisdom of God that I can even shut my eyes and trust Him. Amen. Yeah. I can't because when our eyes are open, we see too much stuff. Yeah. That's why I tell people, when you come to church, you come and worship God, close your eyes and worship Him, man. Yeah. Why do you say close my eyes? I don't got to no, 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 you're just seeing too much junk going on. You're seeing, come on now, people talking, you're seeing kids running, you're seeing things you shouldn't see. Yeah, right. Huh? Right. You're watching. Yeah. Hello? Right. Ladies swaying back and forth and tight jeans and stuff you shouldn't be watching. Right, yeah. Close, close your eyes, man. Right. And watch Jesus. Right. And worship Jesus. Amen. And picture him in, in your mind, you with me, in the spirit. Huh? And ask him, God, help me. I don't know what I'm going through right now. He said, yeah, you know, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm not fear no evil, for thou art with me, Lord. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. Amen. You anoint me in the presence of my enemies, in the face of not just the devil, but those who would come against me too. You're going to bless me, God. And they're going to look and say, man, I can't believe God used him. Right. Huh? Right, amen, amen. And then you say, man, come on over here. You can come and eat too at my table. Hmm? Right, man. <laughs> right, man. Vision gives you the ability to go from the promise to the palace, but in between to carry on. Because that's where, that's where you see everybody quitting. It's in the hard times, it's in the lean times, it's when there's no food and when you ain't got a place and when there's no money and your gas is on me. And man, you ran out, you gotta walk and all this stuff. But the promise says, the word says, my wisdom says. Yeah. Hmm? Right, right. God, I'm gonna praise you even through it, man. even through the valley. I'm not stopping here. Joseph didn't stop in prison, Joseph continued using his gift. Right. You with me? Amen. He continued doing whatever it was that he did. Amen. You with me? And that promise and that vision is going to keep you in this next year. Because I think we're about to go through some times of trials and tribulations <laughs> like you've never seen before. Not just necessarily personally, but as a church. Not as our church, as a body of Christ. You're going to see things change. And you're going to have to know this God you say you know. Right, amen. You're going to have to get into that word. Amen. You're going to have to bow those knees. Amen. You with me? And you might not bow now, but when you go through trials, I promise you, you're going to get on your knees and you're going to cry out to God. Right. Amen. And I told him today, God, your word said, call unto me, son, and I will answer thee. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou, you, your mind can't even comprehend. And I said, God, I'm standing on your word. And I'm walking by faith, God. Even in the darkness, I'm walking by faith, God. I'm watching you. I'm listening to your voice. I'm not going by the way I feel. God, I feel like quitting. I feel like giving. But I'm not going by that. I'm going by faith, by the wisdom of God, by the imagination you placed in my heart. My heart. Yeah, hmm? Come on now. Amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand of praise tonight? Amen. I'm going to stop there tonight. Why don't you stand with me? I hope you gleaned something tonight. I know you did.